welcome to Ballroom Mastery, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vaughn. Nice to see you. How's it going out there? Thought I'd be a bit random on my intro. Today, I want to talk to you about quality versus quantity. But before I begin, how you doing? How are you? And where are you in this dance sport world of ours? Are you loving your practice and your ballroom dancing at the moment? If not, let me help reignite the passion and the flame inside you. Everybody's left for the day and the evening, so I figured I'd have a couple of minutes. Let me share some ideas with you that might help you out a little bit. Uh, if you haven't seen these before, please check out the previous like catalog, if you will, or library of ones. Uh, I'm a big, big believer in the way that you see things through your perception and the attitude is going to determine how far you go basically with anything and everything you do. Look at that, the hair flipping everywhere. Um, but look, seriously, thank you for being part of the, the page. It's great to have you here. And I'd like to talk to you today about quality versus quantity. You know, the big thing that I notice with people who dance and basically any skill that you want to master, there is, uh, of course, practice that you need to have. And we'll talk about practice in another episode of what we need to do and how we're going to make it better. But there's a misnomer, which means like a misunderstanding that the more that you do a thing, the better you'll get at it. And when we go into practice and why that's, uh, and, and sort of how to do it properly, you'll learn very quickly, that's not true. You can repeat something the wrong way many, many times and just screw it up and do it wrong, right? So uh, we look at it and think, okay, anytime you practice something, anytime you do something, you've got to be very deliberate in the way you approach it. So, and I'll, I'm going to exemplify this with, um, with a weird analogy that I just thought of, and, you know, hopefully this one works. But I want you to imagine a little squirrel, right? What's the squirrel doing? He's going out to get his nuts. Little squirrel's sitting there in the tree, wakes up every morning, and all he's doing is going out, getting the nuts, getting the nuts, getting the nuts. You know, he wakes up, has his nutmeg coffee, goes out in the world, foraging like a madman, stocking up for winter, packing the nuts until he can't get any more. Nuts, nuts, nuts. And all he does is stack these bad boys up in his little tree house, right? Winter finally comes and he looks at the nuts and the nuts, they're uh, dead on the inside. They've got like some fungi that's killing them. He was so preoccupied with getting nuts and just stacking up the amount of nuts in his little nut tree house that he forgot to look at what the shape of the condition of the nuts were. Meanwhile, you got like other nut guy down the road, you know, sitting up in his treehouse like a king with quality nuts, right? He's sitting there and they're just in a beautiful bundle. He doesn't have as many as the other guy, but they're the right type that'll get him through. Now, weird as that is, it's exactly how we should practice because it isn't the amount of times you do something, it's the quality at which you do it. Having said that, you should also aim to do a certain threshold, right? Like, so doing one good New Yorker is not going to make you good. But doing 10 bad ones isn't going to make you good either, right? So you certainly have to practice a certain way. And like I said, we'll talk about that later. And let me know if, if you'd like to know the certain super ninja secret tips with tr practice and training um, that really do work and can shave years off your learning in that sense. Um, having said that, if we look at quality, we'll have to think, well, then what does quality really mean? So a student I just had in here before who was doing some solo practice with me, and I, I hope you do solo practice and don't just rely on your partner. Um, but we're talking about the heel turn. You know the heel turn in ballroom dancing. Go back, close your feet. Of course, you uh, create a turn uh, on one foot, uh, you know, with both feet closed, and then you transfer the weight and come out. Well, we were doing that step, and what I noticed is how much he was rushing. Rush, rush, rush. It was like, I've got to go through and do as many of these as I can. I've got to do another one, as many as I can. Like, ah, the next one, ah. And he never took the time to set up properly, right? Can you relate to that one? You know, like, all he would do is the next one. And as it went on, the, the progression went down. It got worse and worse. And I went, well, wow, you got to relax. Relax, man. Like, there's no points for speed, right? Think about what you're doing. What's up, Rebecca? Hello, Barbara. Thanks for tagging people in there. Look, there's no points for speed. But there are points for accuracy, right? And there's points for quality. So it's quality over quantity. But you still need a quantity of the quality work you do. But think about what you're doing, think it through. So I gave him a quick thing, I was like, look, you gotta swing, then you gotta step, then you gotta close, then you gotta turn. Swing, step, close, turn. Swing, step, close, turn. Think about it, and then as you go to do it, just do it. Don't try and say it as you're doing it, just do it, right? Quality though. Then when you finish it, pause for a second, set up again properly. 
Then say it again. Swing, step, close, turn. All right. Got it. Do, he did it again. And, and like each time it was more effective practice, right? It was more effective work. It was like moving him closer to the goal. And that's exactly what we need to do. Now, in my own practice with Alison, we needed to, to do this again and again. On one step, we would, like our goal and boring mastery, right? Hence the term mastery. We're trying to master what we're doing. What's up, Helen? Great. Thank you. Awesome video. Need to follow this page. Yeah, follow the page. <laughs> um, listen, we need to focus. We need to, need to go, all right, I'm going to master this one skill. By, by mastering it, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to accumulate skills where I didn't expect as well. And I know with Alison and I, we would turn up to the studio, and I'm going to make a very important note on this. Listen to this. Are you ready? Listen to this. Ready? Here it goes. You don't need to spend five hours in the studio. In fact, I'm yet to see someone who spends five hours in the studio and actually does five hours worth of practice, number one, and who spends that amount of time in the studio, even if it's three hours, and actually gets better as a result. So time doesn't mean you're going to improve your dancing in the sense of putting more in. And this is one of the reasons why I say quantity doesn't matter, right? Like quantity of time doesn't mean you're going to get better. So I'm going to exemplify this, and you can test me on this. I've had people that have danced for 20 years and they're not good, like at all. And I, I'm not being mean. I'm like, they're just not good. Like, like the, for 20 years, you'd think you'd be pretty good, yeah? Or you'd be semi-decent. They don't even hit semi-decent. They're just shit. I'm like, what have you done with yourself? But I, I've done like this many hours per week for like 20 years. I'm like, that doesn't mean you're going to be good, right? Like it, it's the way you approach it. That's what matters. You know, it's much better to do less, but do more with less, right? Like to to approach it in a manner that actually not only resonates, but moves you uh, forward in the direction that you should go, right? Whatever the goals are for you. And remember, I'm gonna say this again, the whole point of this page and what I do in Ballroom Mastery and what I do with my clients and what I do with YouTube is to help you create the best version of yourself, whatever that means for you, but the best version, not the mediocre version, not the crap version, not the, oh, on my best day, I'll be like this, no. The best version of you day in, day out, consistency, right? Now to do that, it's the, quality mindset so everything matters right like to get a quality outcome in what you do everything matters so if you're going to set up for like a new yorker you don't just think of your feet you position your posture you position your head you position your feet properly you position your arms right you start to think it through and you start to imagine what that feels like and then you slowly train your body to do it then you do it a bit faster but each time it's really thought out and that's what alice and i did so much in our dancing that it was almost ludicrous. It was like we'd do one feather, one feather in the fox shot, one more feather in the fox shot, like day in and day out, but never trying to do it the same way. It was like trying to do it that little bit better. What went wrong, right? Now, this might sound really obvious to you, but most people get bored with that, and I hope you don't. If you do, you're not approaching it the right way. You've got to try and find a new way to do the same thing, right? I'm a teacher. If I didn't do that, I would be so bored because like we teach the same thing all the time. So we've got to find new ways. Hence the squirrel story. So my advice for you today, my walk away and takeaway for you is to always remember, time doesn't mean you automatically get better. All right, so if that's the case, quality and the quantity of that quality combined together with the right way you think about it is going to move you the right way. I'm going to exemplify one more story. Um, there's a gentleman.